Hello everyone, I'm Josh Oaks with smartsocial.com. I'm honored that you'd bring us into your family here today with our Smart Social podcast. Whether you're listening to us on YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, iTunes, or wherever our message reaches you here today, I'm honored that you'd let us teach you how to keep your kids safe and smart online in this world full of social media. And a really big part of this that people are talking to us about is bullying, anxiety, and depression. It's a huge deal, it reaches all of us. And it's really the silent, hurtful thing. And today I have an amazing human being here today that I'm so honored to, to have on. And he's gonna teach you all about his story, which is incredible. And he's gonna show you all about how his story can help you reach more people and how he's helping others. Today I have Justin Wren. He's an MMA fighter. He's an author, a speaker, and a humanitarian, and a really cool dude. Now Justin, uh, is the founder of an organization called Fight for the Forgotten, and he has a book as well, right now on Amazon, called Fight for the Forgotten, How a Mixed Martial Artist Stopped Fighting for Himself and Started Fighting for Others. I get chills just saying that. Justin, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thank you so much for having me. This is an awesome opportunity, and I'm really excited about uh, this right now, so thank you. Now, everybody that's listening to this right now, you may have either just heard Justin's testimonial video, Fighting His Way Out of Darkness. We probably just played that. Or if you're on our website, you can click the, the video below to watch his actual story and his testimony about how he was bullied. Justin, t give us a quick synopsis of you, th third grade to eighth grade, kind of what happened at school and how you got your start in this. Yeah. So third to eighth grade was, was pretty tough. I grew up getting... Um, yeah, very heavily bullied, but um, kindergarten through second grade, I had a speech therapist um, heavily, and I, it went, it continued all the way through sixth grade. Um, but I just, uh, once I transferred schools uh, to a new school, third, third grade, um, I was just a target from day one. Um, I, I was the new kid, I spoke funny, um, a kid at the playground jumped on my back, started hitting me in the back of the head the first day, um, and I just, uh, it, it got real tough to where I would sit at the lunch table by myself. Um, I would get pelted in the back of the head with um, food, uh, chocolate milk spit wads or, or fist as kids walked by. Um, it wasn't a daily occurrence, but, but it was often. Um, it was enough to where uh, I, I really, um, I was one of the, the 180,000 kids that skipped school every day um, because of bullying. I mean, that's, a, that's an astronomical number of kids in the U.S. that are skipping school, close to 200,000 um, a day because it's bullying so bad. And so uh, we, I don't know, just for me, I, I, my parents couldn't get me to go to school a lot of times, um, because, and I didn't want to let them know exactly what was going on. I didn't want to disappoint them. I didn't, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't a kid that was getting in, in disciplinary problems. I wasn't acting up in school. Um, but I was being targeted and I was being bullied and I didn't want my parents to know that, Hey, I'm not the, the cool kid. I'm not the popular kid. I'm not the great. At that time, I wasn't big time into athletics. So I wasn't good in athletics. Um, I didn't really find my way. And so I just felt lost, um, at school. Uh, the bullying got so bad to where I remember that I was going to this middle school birthday party and it was my biggest crush. And her name was uh, Jennifer, and Jennifer invited me to her party, and we got invitations. And on the invitation, it said it was a costume contest. The winner's going to get a prize. And so people started talking about what they were going to wear. There was Batman. There was Superman. I mean, people just started coming up with all the different characters, Thor and X-Men and all these different things. But I knew that Jennifer loved um, Transformers. She loved Transformers, and um, I asked around, and I just thought I would come to the party dressed as a transformer, but I wanted to even catch her eye even more. So I dug deeper. Her dad worked at Dr. Pepper. Um, they even had a Dr. Pepper machine in their house, in their living room. It was kind of cool at school that everyone knew you just push the button, you don't even pay, it just pops the, the Dr. Pepper right out. And so uh, I decided to make myself a Dr. Pepper transformer from head to toe. And so I was gonna be Dr. Optimus Prime, uh, or sorry, Dr. Optimus Pepper going to the party. And so I had a 24 pack on my head. 
I had a 12, 12 packs and, you know, my mom helped me. I was a country kid with some duct tape and, and a bunch of uh, Dr. Pepper. So we, we saved up a bunch of cans of, of Dr. Pepper, but the rest of me transformed into that, that Dr. Pepper, Optimus Pepper. And um, so I remember going to the party and Mimi opening the door, her grandmother, and her grandmother just saying, ah, oh, Jennifer's going to love this. She's going to love it. And so I had taken all this time to really try to impress her, to catch her eye, to stand out from the crowd, um, and went to the backyard. Actually, I got to stop by the Coke machine or the Dr. Pepper machine and get a Dr. Pepper out, walk to the backyard. When I opened the door, I was met by my peers. And uh, a couple flashes of light went off. And I just remember my middle school crush saying, I can't believe you thought you were good enough to come to my party. Um, and then right next to her, Tyler said, um, you're worthless. And next to him, uh, my notorious middle school bully who had, I share the same name with, his name was Justin. Um, he said, you should just kill yourself. And so at that moment, um, I started to battle the biggest battle of my life, which was against depression, um, suicidal ideation. Um, there was times of anxiety, um, but uh, depression was was has been my biggest battle in life. And so, um, but instantaneous, I would just remember not feeling good enough to be at that party. Um, I felt worthless um, and I started contemplating suicide. Um, and so now I have a heart for the most bullied people in the world. I went and lived with the, the Mabuti Pygmies um, and anthropologists call them the most oppressed people group on earth. Um, and I found this project and this passion and this purpose uh, to help the most bullied people in the world. Um, but we're wanting to do it here stateside too. And so we've been helping the pygmy since 2011. Um, but now we're starting, uh, as of this year, um, we're, we're, we're getting into a hundred martial arts academies with bullying prevention and character development curriculum. And, uh, we're looking at, in a year from now, a uh, year, year and a half, 12 to 18 months, we want to, uh, we want to go to um, public and private schools, have an online curriculum that, that students can go through, that teachers can go through, that parents can go through, and that they can track along with it. And really, I think for bullying prevention, you really need character development uh, to be meshed in there, intertwined. You need to develop and go deep beneath the topsoil of character development. We want to raise up good humans and people that treat each other right and have respect and honor for one another. Um, and just treat each other with compassion and empathy. Um, and so we're wanting to encourage that. We're wanting to empower the students to know that they can make a difference. Whenever it comes to bullying, there's some stats out there that are, that are staggering. Um, you let's, know, I, let's talk about your project. I'm, I'm, and I appreciate your background. And this is so in, inherent to who you are. And I want to come back for in a moment and talk to parents and share with parents kind of what you've learned is, as a mixed martial arts fighter and part of the ultimate fighter, uh, you've, you've done some amazing things in your career. So much so that Joe Rogan has put you on his podcast. You've now reached millions of people. You've, you've had some success. Any, any MMA fighter would say you've been successful. But I want to talk to you about the coolest project that I've ever seen, what you did with your free time. In 2011, as everybody can see on the screen, a, a, you went, uh, they call you the big pygmy. Uh, you went deep into the rainforest of the Congo and to the enslaved Mbuti. Is, how do you pronounce that? Mbuti, yeah. Mbuti, pygmy tribe who referred to themselves as the forgotten people. You lived with them for a full year, immersing yourself in their culture and becoming part of their family. They gave you the name, uh, a name which means a man who loves us. And this is in your book, and I'm going to give you a shameless plug because it's my job to be your cheerleader here. And as everybody that knows that listens to our podcast all over the world, there are great people like this that will inspire your child to be, well, we're going to talk about your program that helps little kids to be heroes in waiting. But look at this wonderful photo. Um, talk to me real quick about, about I mean, and, and we're going to have a link below where you guys can buy his book on Amazon. Talk to me about how powerful this, this clean water was and what you did for these people, if you don't mind. Yeah, so, I mean, growing up, I found my childhood dream to, 
to be an MMA fighter at 13 years old. After that bullying instance um, at the house and me dressed up, it was only a few weeks or months after that that I found MMA. And I threw myself at it um, with, with wrestling. Um, I became a 10-time state champion in wrestling, a five-time All-American, a two-time national champion. I left high school and went straight to the Olympic Training Center um, for wrestling. At 19, uh, I had already wrestled in Moscow, kickboxed in Amsterdam. Um, and by the time I was 21, I was on a reality TV show um, in Vegas, uh, fighting at the highest level of the sport. Um, but it didn't fulfill me. Um, I, I found myself in a deep, dark depression. And um, it, it, I remember getting my hand raised and I would just think, is this it? Is this all? Like it didn't feel like it was necessarily my purpose. Um, I was always fighting against people, um, but really I, I was just supposed to be fighting for people. And so I felt like that was my purpose, was to fight for people. Um, and so we started up a project for the Pygmies where I went and I, I, I stayed with them for a month. I came back for a year and planned to go stay with them for another month and then came back and planned out during that year how I'd go live with them for a year. And so the goal was to live with them, listen to them, learn from them, and collectively together we come up with the best way to love them in the most sustainable way in community development projects. And so the Pygmies had to go into their suffering is, is, is pretty tough. I mean, it, there's just so much stacked up against them. Um, but their average height's only four foot seven, um, and they're smaller than the people around them. Because of that, they, they get their land stolen from them. They even call people master. They, they've been enslaved. Um, and so what we wanted to do was come back and help them get land back for themselves. And so we lobbied and petitioned on the local, state, and national governmental level and we got them back 2,470 acres of land that they now legally own. It's the first time in their country's history that they've had land ownership for themselves. Um, and so we were able to, to petition and, and say, hey, these are the first people of your country. Um, they're, they're the first people group of, of Africa, a lot of people think. And yet they have no land ownership at all. Don't you think that the first people group here deserves some sort of land? And so we were able to, to purchase land back on their behalf, give it to them. It's the strongest thing in Congo courts being bought in the name of a people group. Then we're able to drill wells. And the reason we wanted to drill wells were um, among the pygmy population, uh, so many people die of dirty water. And so children there, um, there's two statistics. One says one out of two children die before the age of five. Um, another says six out of 10. So it's some of the highest child mortality rates um, in the world. It's one of the lowest life expectancies. Um, they have so much stacked up against them. And so uh, one of my introductions to the water crisis was, was actually burying a, a little boy named Andy Bo. And so digging his grave, having, his, having blisters on my hands um, with, with our team. And that just rocked me. That forever changed me. It, it gripped my heart. It, 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 no, it ripped my heart apart. And, um, and it started to, to change who I was. And so what we wanted to do was invest in the locals, uh, train them up with the tools, um, give them the knowledge, and let them be the change they want to see in their own community. Um, and so um, for me, I, I just wanted to empower people, and this is me personally, but just uh, wanting to empower people to put God's love and compassion in action. Not just to talk about it, but to, but to let's do something practical where people truly um, are helped in a, in a genuine, genuine way, transformative way. And so we've been able to see now 1,500 people uh, transition out of a life of slavery and into a life of freedom. Um, and it was just because of land, water, and food initiatives. And so we're, we're beginning in, in March another project uh, with the Batwa Pygmies in neighboring Uganda. So it, it borders the Congo. And we're starting another thing where we're going there to give them back land titles um, we're starting to drill six wells there, um, and we are uh, starting up a new farm there. So they're able to farm and feed themselves, go out and feed the community, and from that make money and be able to send their kids to school. And so land, water, and food, just three basic things that, that changes everything. That's incredible. Now, parents, if you're listening to this, if, if, if your students are listening, students, this is an incredible person you're listening to. Current MMA fighter fighting against 
this, this summer. He's got some amazing things that you're going to hear about in the news soon. But Justin didn't always maybe have his purpose. He thought it was MMA for a long time, and, but that didn't fulfill him. But what you can do right now, students, is you can have projects. And this is what Justin did. He went and he started helping people and he stayed there for a while and he found they needed stuff. And he started helping them. And these projects turned into something that he's so passionate about. He started to find his purpose. And this is something that here at Smart Social, we want you to find whatever that is so that you are doing something meaningful in your life and that ends up online. Justin's the same way right now. He's doing something absolutely meaningful. He did a cool project. Now he can move on to doing that same thing for other people, which is, it's so much more than the way I'm describing it. But at the same time, students, if you're listening to this right now, there's a lot that you can do. Uh, whatever you're doing online, make sure that you can tell a story about how does it help others or how can I teach people how to do this to help others, whether it's cooking, whether it's mathematics, whatever it is, telling that story. And that's what Justin's doing with this book. Fight for the Forgotten. He's teaching people how to give others a voice. Justin, this, this hits on so many levels because you being somebody that was bullied and now fights others, and now you're saying, hey, somebody bullied me, but now I can fight and I can be kind to others. You're showing so many people that you can be vulnerable and your vulnerability is an asset. Mm. You're, you're the gentle giant, if you will, but this summer you're not going to be. You're going to be on stage showing the world that you can win. Right. Right. What do you tell students, Justin? What would you tell a student right now? What do they need to hear? Maybe they're they've seen it on so because you were bullied in person for a long time, and that that's bad. When you went home, you still felt bad. But some students they see it online. They're on Snapchat. They're not invited to the party. So what you saw of getting invited to a party, putting together that amazing outfit, and and just being a nice person and getting hurt. That was terrible. Now some students are feeling it on here. Yeah. What would you tell students from a guy like you that was really hurt as a child and then you found yourself and now you're helping others and you're in love with life more than ever. What would you tell them? <coughs> Sorry, excuse me, but um, I would tell them that there's hope, um, that there is light, there's hope in, there's hope in the darkness um, that the future's bright, um, that uh, even though it seems, if you're going through it now, it, it can seem so uh, hopeless, but there's always hope, and, th and that you can overcome this tough time, this trial. You just have to dig deep. You have to communicate uh, with your loved ones, with your parents, um, with your teachers, with the school faculty, um, with your classmates. Don't isolate, don't close up. Don't, uh, don't bottle it up um, because I, I can go back to that Dr. Pepper. Maybe we could go to a Dr. Pepper can or bottle where whenever it gets shaken up, it builds up all this pressure. And if you, if you just let it keep on being shaken up and shaken up and bottled up, like that can, it can explode and whenever it, can, it can go everywhere. It can me it get messy. But whenever you open up slowly, um, and think about just cracking the top of that uh, bottle up and releasing some of that pressure slowly by opening up and sharing with your parents about what's going on. I know that that instance of that bullying moment and me being uh, dressed up like that, it actually exposed the bullying to my parents in a way that, that now they understood and knew how deep and, and painful it was to me. Um, because they found me at a Dairy Queen, ran away from the party, threw away all the the, the cardboard boxes of, of Dr. Pepper cans in the dumpster. I had, you know, the residue of the the uh, sticky stuff all over my shirt, my jeans. Um, and me being able to open up or having to open up was probably the best thing for me because then my parents were able to put together a plan of action that, okay, this is this is our game plan now. And I think when you're in a fight, when you're in a battle, when you're in a struggle, um, one of the best things to do is sometimes um, separate from the emotions and the hurt and come up with a game plan um, to where you're able to say, this will get me out of this painful situation. And so my parents had to switch me out of the school that I was in. That was something drastic, but it was what needed to happen. 
And that was one of the best decisions my parents ever made for me was actually taking me out of that school where the bullying had been taking place for five years um, and hadn't stopped even after reporting it. Um, you know, my parents had to separate me from there. Here's some, here's some statistics for just Oklahoma students. There was this uh, grades nine through 12, 28 point, and this statistic came out in 2016, but 28.9% of the Oklahoma high school students deal with depression that lasts for two weeks or more at a time. So th that affects their daily activities and affects their performance. That's 28.9% of the students. 15.1% of them uh, have been contemplating suicide, have suicidal ideation. And then 7.4% of the Oklahoma high school students uh, said that they had attempted suicide. Um, and, and a lot of this was, was based on bullying, social anxiety, um, depression. Um, and it's something that we just, it needs to be addressed. We've got to do something about it. And what we hope to do is implement a curriculum we're calling Heroes in Waiting. And so what we want to, and, and basically the premise of that, or what I want the students to hear, is that sometimes you need to know that, that, that every one of us has a, has a purpose. Every one of us um, can make a difference. That we are all heroes in waiting. Um, and that, uh, you know, what is a hero? A hero is someone who sees a need and takes action immediately. They don't stand back and wait. They're, they're not a bystander. They're someone that, that, that sees a need and they take action. And so what we want to do is encourage students that, that hey, whenever you stand up against bullying, it, it, it changes things. It can change a life. It can save a life. Um, and it's the right thing to do. Um, what we want to do is empower people to go from being a bystander to being an upstander. And so someone that will stand up for the person that's being bullied because what they need to know is to be empowered that you can shut bullying down within five seconds, 87% of the time. So almost nine out of 10 times you can be the one to shut down bullying, to stop it or deflect it um, and to change the situation. Whenever you just stand up and say something, one thing, it can be as easy as, hey, that's not kind. Yeah. Right? Stop that. Um, yeah. And being the person to be assertive um, and to take action will shut down the bullying. Most bullies are encouraged to keep bullying by bystanders being silent. Yeah. And so what, what that actually translates to, or the body language is saying that I'm not just a bystander, I'm a silent supporter. Mm. So if, if you're being a bystander, you're, you're involved. Mm. It didn't, you didn't pick it, it picked you, but, but now you have to take action or you have to make a choice. Your choice is either to do nothing and to be quiet and to let it continue, or your choice is to do something about it, to, to, to intervene, um, to include that person in your circle or your group, or to just, you see someone sitting alone by themselves at the lunch table, go sit with them or invite them to come sit with you. Um, and, and just to, to be this person of kindness, that, that kind, being kind is strong, being kind is, is cool. You know, it's not, it's not something cheesy, it's not something uh, weak, um, you know, it's something strong, being kind to, to other people is something that, that takes courage. I love that, being kind is strong. And any, any students that are listening to this right now, or parents, especially students, understand that being vulnerable is strong too. If somebody makes fun of you, and nowadays, and I think Justin would agree, being unique and funny, and you can actually be the life of the party these days, if you love yourself and you show up dressed as a Dr. Pepper transformer, you can be the life of the party. Yeah. People actually will like you more. They'll go, that guy is cool. I want to be friends with that. But when you're a kid, that can tear you apart. What, what Justin went through can hurt. But now as soon as you become an adult, that same thing that you want to do, what Justin did, I, I guarantee he'd make 100 more friends now being, if he showed up, Dr. Pepper Transformer, people say, that guy's cool. He loves himself. He has confidence. I want to hang out with that person. If you see somebody doing this, behaving in a cool way that's unique, know that in the future, that person will be the life of the party. That person has enough confidence if, they're, if they like themselves enough to, to, to really do whatever they want. And that's what I would encourage students right now. Learn from Justin's story. 
that if somebody picks on you, they're usually fighting their own battles. That per and this is hard in the moment. It's very hard in the moment, but that person picking on you is usually going through a lot and we think, oh, it's all us and it, we are terrible and this is, but that person's actually going through a lot. And if you see this happen, as Justin just said, please stick up, be kind. That means you're powerful. It doesn't make you less cool. Doesn't mean that bully's gonna pick on you as much because other people are probably gonna defend and help. And, and it's, gonna, it's gonna make a difference. And you actually might really make a friend out of that person being bullied because that person that's being bullied probably will be the life of the event, the party in the future. And people that are bullied end up being wonderful human beings someday. As you can see, they can actually become MMA people that are on TV, that are successful. But even more than that, they can change a whole culture with what Justin's doing right now. Justin, talk to us about anxiety. How do you deal with anxiety with all the stuff that you do and as you help people? What's your tip? Yeah, for me, um, you know, anxiety is something that uh, I had a little bit of whenever I was younger, um, but it's actually something that's come out in recent years more so than ever. Um, and so I've had with, with more responsibilities, with more uh, challenges, with being pulled in multiple different directions, um, just feeling like you have to um, not, it, it just, everything matters now um, there, with, because there's so much purpose and so much passion and so much, uh, uh, so whenever I get overwhelmed with anxiety, um, I have a couple things I do, but um, I go to my wife a lot of times and, and, and just be open and honest and say, hey, I'm feeling this right now. And then we're able to talk about it and having it out in the open um, a lot of times helps bringing something into the light, um, which is, I think a lot of times it's healing. A lot of times it's, it's just good to get it out in the open and open air. When you think about um, things that are kept in the dark, that's where, that's where bad stuff thrives. A lot of times you think of fungus, you think of bacteria, it needs to be in the darkness Need, that's where it can it can grow and and not just survive but thrive, and then you bring it into the light, and you bring that fungus that bacteria into the light, and a lot of times it can't it can't thrive there. Maybe it can survive, but you bring stuff into the light, and a lot of times it, it starts to take away its its power, is what I think. Bringing anxiety into the light with my wife, having her pray with me, um, guide me. And then just also taking a step back and just being like, you know what, like this isn't a life or death matter. I can't give it this much power. I need to think about this logically. Um, and to just, uh, for me, man, anxiety comes to something personal. And when I take it to me personally, when I take it to God, it gets a lot better. That's amazing. I know we've heard stories from a past guest, Justin, where somebody will upset them. And that person, one of the phrases that I've heard from people that seems to be really powerful is that person now has free rent in your mind and in your oh, yeah. heart when you hurt when, and they're, they're taking that over. And as soon as a student hears that, what does a free rent mean? It means I, I'm pretty sensitive these days. I, it feels like some more and more sometimes, unless I'm really, I, can, I have a, a, what's that? So that's all right. Me too. I get, I get more and more feelings as I get older. Yeah. And you, and you, if somebody says something you misunderstood, then our minds and students, if you feel this way, this is totally normal. Your mind might go to other things like, Oh, well, maybe they hate me or they told me this or, or maybe I was rude here an accident or, and, and that's usually our mind messing with us. And so one of the things I've, I've heard in the past is you're letting that person have free rent. Maybe that bully or somebody else have free rent in your head, meaning they don't know what you're thinking, or maybe they made a mistake and said something wrong and you're really hurt by it, but you're holding on to it. So one of the things I've tried with my life that maybe you guys might consider students is either go talk to that person about it. And anxiety is huge. It's big in adults. It's big in students. It's even more so when we're online. Yeah. But one of the things you can just do is tell your parents or tell that person, hey, this hurt me, right? And if you don't feel comfortable telling that person, and if you don't feel comfortable telling your parents, there's a lot of teachers at school, there's a cool aunt or uncle you might have. Yeah. Um, you could tell a friend too, but sometimes an adult's gonna know how to deal with this better and they're gonna listen without telling you what to do oftentimes. That's one tip. One more tip, students. If you wanna avoid 
all of this, one of the tips that I give people, there's a lot of apps out there that are anonymous apps and you students know what they are, where students will say, oh, but I get random compliments from people and it's all chill and it's cool, Josh, you don't understand. We see the most bad things come from those anonymous apps. And the, the downside outweighs the upside. If you're on anonymous apps or you see a student at school that might be on those, please have a talk with them or tell an adult because those can be places where people go where the fungus will grow, the mold will grow, and they're dark places that can really hurt us. And, and that's something to consider. Whereas Instagram can be a little bit more public. It's not perfect. There can be bullying there too. But consider friends, students, keeping your friends off those anonymous apps and keeping them a little bit more public so that people can see and be positive in real life. When we're tied to our real identity as Justin is now, Justin goes and does rad stuff in other countries to literally save lives and give people freedom. And he does that not to brag. You'll watch his videos, you can see his video above or below, or maybe you just listen to his story and his testimony. But he does it in a way to help others, but he ties it to his real identity, which keeps him honest. And it keeps him a man of integrity. And that's really what we want for you students is tie it to your real identity so you can help others and you have nothing to hide. Wow. That was powerful. <laughs> I appreciate you saying all that. That's uh, stuff that I wish I could have heard. So students that are listening, this is great stuff uh, that, 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 that you're hearing. Um, this is keep coming back to this and, 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 and feeding on, on this good meat. Um, that, that's just good for our, our souls, good for our minds, good for our hearts. Um, and let's be good, what is that, social citizens, you know, and, um, and great digital citizens where, where we are um, just treating people right and with respect and, and love and, and, and do things that, that build people up and, uh, and create more opportunities of, for, for their dignity to, to, to grow and to, to, to be more full instead of to take away and to tear down and to, to, to come against people. I think, I think the way that you're messaging it, that online we can create movements of, of people doing really cool, kind things for people, powerful things in the community and in this world and in our country, um, we, can, we can be part of making an incredible impact and difference. And that just feeds into our life. As we, as we pour ourselves out, I, I feel like we get filled up a lot of times and, and sometimes we need to rest and sometimes we need to take personal time but uh, it, to fill back up but a lot of times as we pour out and as we impact and better the lives of others as we build better lives it builds a better life for ourselves so I just love that that cycle of just building and investing and encouraging and building people up that's powerful. And I love what you're saying. You're basically saying help others and you're going to be happier. Yes, you need to take rest. Yes, we need to work on ourselves a little bit. But if you're a student and you're listening to this or you're a parent of a middle schooler and a high schooler, please consider talking to your children about their future. One of the biggest behavioral issues we see these days is if kids get that phone as a pastime, but they don't have a plan for their future, they'll just behave as a pastime. But if they know and you give them this vehicle, which is a, a high performance car, which could be dangerous, if you give them, okay, we need to get you to go here to this destination, they'll take this and they'll go somewhere with it. They'll know what to do with it. Please have a talk with them about their future. And as you've learned from perhaps my favorite guest, Justin here today, he started with a project, a faith-filled project. He went to another world, another country where these people were hurting. There was nothing in it for him. And he went and he helped them. And he went, whoa, what am I getting myself into? I could get killed. There, there are all kinds of dangerous things here. But he helped these people. And then he told that story. Your kids can do the same thing. Students, you can do something well. You can learn anything on YouTube. Within, you can play the guitar. You can fix your car on YouTube. But once you learn how to do it with your own passion and your friends, Make a video about it. Start your own YouTube channel that helps others. Talk to your parents first about that. Be safe, but help somebody with that. Take Justin's tips and go do something awesome. You'll actually have a lot of fun with it. And as you're doing that project, you're gonna find your passion. You're gonna find your purpose. You're gonna have a little website. There will not be a college or an employer that doesn't wanna bring you in for an interview and say, 
Tell me what you did because that's what they're looking for. And I'm not saying that's the mission in life is to only get you into a dream school or only get you a dream, but you're going to find yourself as you're doing these projects. You'll find out what you don't like. You'll find out what you do like when you start doing other things for people and it could still be social. Justin, I'm going to give you last word. I'm really thankful for your time today. What do you tell a student that, that took you from bullied to MMA winner, fighter, awesome guy. And then what, what, what would you tell a student about the MMA fighter and how he finds, how he can be kind to people, even though you're this summer, you're going to be rocking it on TV. Everybody's going to see your name. How do you still find time and, and in your heart to be kind to people? Yeah, I think that that had to, to be, um, there was a transformation that had to take place in my mind and in my heart. And, um, I, I signed my book now, now I sign my book, which is right here, uh, fight for the forgotten. Um, thanks for having me grab this to show. Uh, they, um, they, I signed my book, live to love fight for people, but I used to sign it live to love, um, or sorry. Yeah. Live to love, love to live. And so the reason I would sign it that way, live to love, love to live is because I think that is the proper order. But I used to have it flip flopped. I used to just want to love the life that I lived. And so it was all about me. It was all about the materialistic stuff. It was all about the show. It was all about uh, fighting and championships and medals and shiny stuff. Um, and whenever I did that, life left me empty. But whenever my perspective changed to where, no, first, I need to live to love. I need to have my head on a swivel looking to make a difference. I need to live my life to love God, love others, love myself. Um, and through that, I will love to live. But I have to have it, I have to have it in the appropriate order. If I live to love, I will love to live. But if I have it backwards, that's only going to leave to me being empty. So it's not all about loving my own life. It's about loving others. And through that, I'll discover a life that I love to live. That's really powerful. Hey, Justin, I'm thankful for your time here today. Hey, thank you. I'm, I'm thankful to be here. I really am. That's awesome. Those of you that are listening here today, you can click the links below because we have a plan and a purpose for your family, a three-step plan on how to monitor your online footprint using Google. And I want to give you our free tool, our free guide that my staff and I put together. It's how to monitor yourself and your kids online. Number two, offline activities that get you excited about life and doing cool things so that you're ready for step three, which is how to shine online, how to develop a little website, how to brand your Instagram, how to show people you can be self-deprecating, fun, authentic online, but you can also be purposeful and you have projects. And we want to put those projects online within reason and safely. You got to talk to your parents about that. But we want to make sure that you are shining online so that everybody goes, whoa, I see the Justin that I heard about and I'm learning so much about this guy. I'm learning about his story, his book. I'm learning about everything that he's doing. And that's what, how we want your students to shine online. And it will change their behavior from being quiet and not knowing what to do to putting their heart into something and trying it. Yes, they'll fail. We want your children to learn, lean forward and figure that out together. But you'll also have a good dialogue with them. So we're going to teach you how to monitor, how to dialogue and have activities and then how to shine online. Click the link below to join our newsletter and get that free guide from us. And we're excited that you guys are here at smartsocial.com to learn more. This is awesome. Justin, I'm really thankful for you, dude. And I, I hope to follow up with you in the future. Keep up the great work, my friend. Hey, thank you so much for having me today. This is, uh, <clears throat> this is great. And I just uh, want to encourage your crowd and community to continue to come back. And I hope it continues to grow because uh, this is important work. And uh, yeah, let's just build better lives together. I love it, brother. Thanks, man. Thank you to all of you. As, you, as always, remember to keep it light, bright, and polite because your kids are watching. We'll see you guys soon. Have a great day.